Once as a child, I saw one of these moths in my garage. It really fascinated me. I wanted to uh, learn more about them. I actually started hanging sheets and lights in my backyard to try to attract all sorts of moths and try to find this. So what I learned was this is the Actius Luna, or the Luna Moth. It's the first thing you notice is this cool lime green color. Um, it does have a wingspan of almost four and a half inches, which makes it one of the largest moths in all of North America. A lot of times people refer to this as a lunar moth, but it's not a lunar moth, it's a luna moth. Which, uh, even in North America, some people call it a moon moth. This is because they're known to mate during a full moon, and then they lay their eggs in the morning. The caterpillars feed on mostly a variety of trees, including white birch, walnut, uh, and sumax. So I thought I would experiment with coming up with a scroll saw design that would use glow-in-the-dark paint and powder. A lot of times these are out in the full moon so it would replicate that cool mystical look that they have. Alright, I come up with a pretty decent design. I'm gonna go ahead and bring this down to the shop and attach it to a piece of pala wood that I found. I figured once I cut it down to size on the miter saw I'll just take it over to the uh, surface planer just to uh, just to level it all out. Of course, if I had a drum sander, that would be the perfect thing for this, but just a sh slight shaving was all that's needed. So sometimes people refer to this intarsia, but it really isn't. This is what's called scroll saw segmentation. I'll bring it over to the scroll saw and start cutting out each piece, just like it's a jigsaw puzzle. You know. I often say woodworkers are considered artists. Well, you know, if you don't have a scroll saw, you really should consider getting one. It's a really fun way to be creative, come up with great ideas, and every time I think I've tried something different on the scroll saw, a new idea comes to mind or, you know, something interesting. So consider it. If you don't have one, I really think it would be a, a nice addition to anybody's wood shop. Uh, regardless of your ability, you'll find something fun to do with it. All right, so everything's cut out, but it's time to give it a little dimension. So uh, first I'll get my, I have a corner bench here that I like to throw this little bit. Uh, it's a little extension here so I can sit underneath it. And I have my little respirator on and my Dremel tool. And I even use uh, packing material, packing foam with uh, sandpaper on it to help round over the edges. Because I'm using soft pine, it's pretty easy to, uh, to create the look that you're looking for with the rounded edges. So on Amazon I ordered these different powders and paints. They're all glow in the dark. This one's a green, they've got blue, aqua, and uh, I even got this powder which is super, super bright. Um, and they all work pretty good with just straight light to charge them. But what I got myself is a UV light. Now the UV light here is really charges them up phenomenal. I mean, let me give you an example of what they'll do once they're charged up pretty well. You know, even with the light on, you can see them glowing already, but once you turn off the light and they're fully charged up, it's pretty impressive how bright these things glow. When making the antennae on the moth, there are like little fins in there. In order to cut it, instead of using a standard sized blade, I use this small, I think it's a metal cutting blade. Able to get in there and make little little intricate cuts just to make the little fins of a, of the antenna on a moth. Because I'm going to paint it, I'm going to go ahead and use some sanding sealer to seal up everything on this uh, pine. Just got to painting, taking the time, listening to the music, enjoying my, uh, my project. In the brown paint, you really can't see that glow-in-the-dark paint. It's pretty clear even with a couple coats on there. So I think it's time to start assembling everything. You know, any wood glue should work. I, I use CO Nioculate or CA glue or super glue, and uh, that works well for me with a little accelerator because I want to move things along and make sure that they're nice and secure and stable. All right, I'm drilling out a hole to put the antenna in there and then attaching the long tail 
And after that's done, what I'll do is I'll get out a sheet of quarter inch ply so I can attach a backer board. And just basically tracing around it and then I'll cut on the inside of that line. So in order to cut the backer board, I like to tilt my table to a 15 degree angle so it's sort of recessed. Um, now you could attach it first and then cut it, but I find it better just to cut inside of the line, take your time, and, and then uh, you can attach it with your wood glue after. It's a pretty straightforward glue up. Um, once you get the glue all spread out and you clamp it up with as many clamps as you got. What I did is I actually got a piece of cherry wood that I had that I cut off so I could mount it to that and mount that to the wall. Because I'm putting this on bark, I'm going to use uh, hot glue to bind it to the uh, bark there. And it'll fill in the spaces and give a much better connection. All right, let's hang it up on the wall. Let's take a look. Charging it up with the UV light there. Whether it's in the regular light or the UV light or it's just simply glowing after you turn off the lights at night, I think it came out pretty cool. Thanks for watching. This is Chris Demetric at TDW Woodworks.